Where am I recording? Let's see. Okay, I'm recording. Here we go. Thank you all for joining us uh, to gather new ideas and feast when it comes to engagement strategies. Uh, today's session is entitled Drive Through Lunch Brunch, Tasty Engagement Ideas to Build Classroom Community. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you our facilitators for today. Wanda Hanley has been an educator for over 20 years. She has started her career at Wake County Public Schools, is fluent in Portuguese, and often uses her bilingual talents to make sure students from Brazil feel at home in North Carolina. Today, Wanda is a digital learning coordinator for Wake County Public Schools, where she supports teachers and learners by offering a variety of services to help teachers effectively plan and use digital resources to advance student learning. She's Google certified, a Seesaw ambassador, and has earned a Discovery Education certification. Juliet Kuhn started her career in Missouri and is an avid Missouri Tigers and Cardinals fan. She came to North Carolina to pursue her graduate degree in instructional technology and has been an ITF in Wake County Public Schools since 2000. Currently, Juliet is a digital learning coordinator and enjoys having the privilege of supporting and learning from teachers. She strives to learn something new every day and that will encourage students to be engaged, curious, and develop a love of learning. She too is a Google certified trainer and educator, as well as a Seesaw ambassador. It's my pleasure now to turn the stage over to these two amazing educators. Ladies. We're going to use Nearpod today as our platform to sort of engage and you'll be able to see it from a student side and a teacher side and you can have another tab open. Um, and there will be times that we uh, invite you to flip back over to the zoom window if you do not have a split screen or a dual screen, just so that you get to see the teacher side before we begin the engagement activity or the activity that you'll be doing on the student side. So you'll have both views today. You'll be experiencing it as a student as well as um, the seeing the teacher side, which often you wouldn't show your students. Um, before we begin, I do want to point something out because we are going to jump right into our inclusion, inclusion activity and Wanda is going to get us started with that. And I just want to point out the immersive reader icon up here in the left hand corner, because you will be seeing that during various times um, in our engagement activities. So if you have not been familiar with Immersive Reader in the past. It's in uh, a lot of the Office 365 apps. It's in Flipgrid, and it's, it's more prevalent in a lot of apps nowadays. And it is uh, throughout different elements in Nearpod. So when students see that, they know, if you are looking um, on my side, they know that they can click and it will open um, text that they can then play and they have three different settings over here so if they go to the last one with the reading preferences if they need an actual picture of something they can make sure the board maker dictionary is turned on and click it and it will give them a picture of some of the words or if they needed it read in a different language they could have it read in say Chinese um, if they just need to see it in Chinese, they can see it in the writing and then play in Chinese. Um, they also have visual um, text size, uh, different fonts and different backgrounds that can help with visual issues that students or participants may have. And then of course, parts of speech that can be turned on in different colors. So just wanted to point that out and make sure that I go back to our English so that I can read what we're doing. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump up to our inclusion activity for Wanda. Right, okay, so um, we just want to do a little poll. Um, and of course, when we're looking at engagement, we want to um, you know, get people involved. So go ahead, here's a poll for what is your level of use with Nearpod? Um, I've never touched it. I use it almost every day. I'm familiar with it. You can select your answer. You um, click your submit button as a teacher um, or as a coach, say a lot of us are coaches and you're doing PD for your school or your district. Um, it's a great way to just you know, poll. I mean, we poll through Twitter, we can poll through Google Slides, but 
polling um, is a great um, way. And, and, and of course, in Nearpod, they give you that uh, percentage wise as well. So we are going to move on. We've got um, 12 that have never touched it. And um, yeah, so we're moving on up there. Okay. Right. And I can take a second even and share the information with you before we move on. So you'd be able to see where the use is. So um, this is another engagement activity we're going to um, dive into. But I've been doing a lot of work um, in Soretta um, Hammond's um, research. And she says that engagement begins with a belief that learning is relevant and it's worth paying attention to. Um, and it's in her book, Culturally Responsive Teaching in the Brain. So as uh, we're thinking about this, think of some engagement activities you have either seen your teachers in your district do, you as a coach have used, you as a teacher have used, if you're an admin and you're in here, you've used, whether you've used it online or in person. And in Nearpod, you can share your thoughts down below. And on the right-hand side, you're going to see a little image icon. And you can go in and search for an image if you want to put a meme in there um, or anything like that. And then you can hit um, the post um, button. And so thank you, Brian. He's already shared. Um, tell me how you're feeling in a jam board. And, uh, and I know Tom's here today, but so many new updates have come out in Jamboard, like the history of Jamboard, the history version. So we really like that. Um, so go ahead and drop your ideas in this slide and um, we'll be able to go back and take a look at them. But um, yeah, using Kahoot as, as a, um, a, you know, sort of a level set. And we always want to, as um, Zaretta Hammond says in her book, we want to build that culture in our classroom and level set. All right. So we're going to move on from this because you can still, um, and then when, when Nearpod is in the student paste, you can go back and forth and at your own pace. Um, so I am going to give you just about 10 more seconds because if you're not familiar with Nearpod, what you're going to find when we do these activities is when I move on, you move on whether you are ready to or not. So I hate to interrupt anybody's learning. Um, this is going to be the one thing when we have the student pace link available on the site that people will not be able to get to in student pace, but everything else you'll be able to re-interact with later a little more and dive deeper into it. So here we go. And I like it because it's like Padlet and you can heart each other's responses too. Yes. Okay. Um, most of us have seen this um, representation, but the North Carolina digital learning standards were adopted by our state. Um, believe it or not, there's a lot of educators out there that are still not aware. So um, in Wake County, as digital learning coordinators, we have this slide as part of our presentation, whenever we go out into the schools or we work with a school. Um, so if you'd like to um, steal this little representation, you can, and there's a link and it takes it to the PDF. And so we're gonna be um, touching on empowered learning, uh, digital citizenship and creative communicator in our engagement activities today. So we, our focus is, as Wanda said, engagement activities. So this particular author, Post, uh, created this article, wrote this article, I should say, before the pandemic. So these are just good engagement practices, whether it's face-to-face, -face, blended, or virtual. And I'm going to give you just a few seconds to review them yourself. So you can see we've already used a team uh, building game and icebreaker. We didn't really gamify it so much as made it an icebreaker and an inclusion activity with the poll to inform what we were going to do and who our audience was. So that can be a very powerful way as you begin a lesson to know what your student's level of understanding is. Today you're going to be experiencing the other elements and I will refer back to them. So just wanted to make sure that you saw them so you had something to hook onto it. And we will revisit them at the end. So let's begin. If you have never used Nearpod, Nearpod has over 20 elements, they're called, that can be interspersed in a PowerPoint created from scratch or add, uh, used through an add-on with Google Slides. These elements have formative assessment pieces such as these. You've already experienced a poll and you will see that we will have that data at the end. There are numerous other ones. You're going to experience a time to climb and you experience the collaborate board. So when you see the reports at the end, you're going to see we have data for those things. 
The other end of Nearpod are going to be media elements. And there is one, the interactive video there at the very bottom. And with that one, you're going to experience that today where there are questions embedded. And I will show you again in the reports, that's gonna provide you with data to help guide your instruction. Some of the other elements, which we won't have time to experience all, such as the FET simulation. If you've ever used that with your students for a virtual hands-on experience, you know that's its own website. It's a great hands-on experience. You will experience something similar from a web content site, but it won't provide us with any data. As we know, good teaching doesn't require data for everything, but it does have both elements. So let's begin by looking at second grade. We're going to be looking at this particular unit in second grade around shapes, and we're doing name that shape. If you are in a situation where you can see my screen and yours, you'll see I have the option to allow students to play, and I'm going to let you do that. And I want to give you about one minute to play as much of this as you can and experience the questions that are asked within. I'm just going to set a timer. When you get to a question, you do have to answer it before it will let you move on. And this is just a less than 90 second video. So you'll, you should have time to hit at least two questions. So again, I will say this throughout, I don't want to interrupt anyone's learning, but we are limited on time. Hopefully you got to experience the different question types. Within these interactive videos, there are multiple choice as well as open-ended questions. So uh, most of the videos that come from Nearpod and there are, There are over 8,500 lessons and videos within Nearpod. This was one of them, already pre-slugged with the questions, but I could have edited that. So this goes back to those five easy engagement strategies. This was very visual, students were learning, they were engaged with the content, they had to interact with the content. So they were responding, not just passively watching the video. So from there, after the video, I've moved you on to a hands-on activity. Now this comes from the Math Learning Center and this is the virtual geo board. This is built into some of our virtual lessons in Wake County. So students can then either be in a breakout room or if they're on one-to-one -one devices face-to-face, -face, they can be doing this discussing what shapes they're building, um, why they know it's that particular shape, and then they can do a follow-up activity. So they've been learning one way, highly visual, making it visual, and now they are reviewing another way. So we're gonna move on from this way of reviewing to now another type of hands-on activity. And I, on the um, Zoom side, I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the student side so that Wanda can talk a little bit more about this, acti at this activity. <laughs> So for those of you who have never um, used Nearpod before, you can see that on the left hand side, there's a little blue arrow that will put your directions up and put your directions down. And then on the right hand side, you've got your immersive reader as well, um, which you know you can model to the students how to use, right? Um, and then down below, you've got um, your pointer, you've got your, your pens, your highlighter, text, you can erase it. Um, you can write in it, um, you can add a picture as well. Um, and so again, it's engagement with learning one way. So the teacher is um, talking to the students and showing them how to do things. And then it's having them practice. But as a teacher, I can say, hey, you know, Paul, how come you haven't started your drawing yet? Or Tom, oh, you missed a side, like triangles have three sides. And, you know, you can talk to your students and get them engaged. Um, and remember that students have to hit the submit button and that green, says that that student has submitted it um, and yellow is not. And now I have a senior in the house 
And um, I did overhear a teacher at one point who was using Nearpod say, hey, Sean, you haven't started yet. When are you going to start your activity? And that got him out of whatever he was doing that he shouldn't have been doing. Um, and then I've also heard from teachers who have used Nearpod that they're like, well, we don't use it every day because students get, um, they if they get too, too much of a thing is a good thing, right? Um, and so to vary it. So those are some of the feedbacks I've heard. But I do really like the draw it. Um, and it, it can be used in multiple content areas, not just math. And if you are looking at the teacher side, you can see, I can see QNRIT has submitted and Brian has submitted. But if I see Tom's kind of paused, I, like Wanda just said, I might say, hey, uh, are you still with us, Tom? And make sure that he does hit submit because that is the thing students most often do is forget that submit key. Or you can say you've got 30 more seconds to submit and just give them those verbal cues as well. So they have a verbal cue and then they should have their visual cue in front of them, which is their drawing. So we have now had highly visual engaging activities. We have um, used, we, we have learned one way and we have practiced two other ways. Mm -hmm. and, and now we're gonna go into music because um, music is very important. And so from the Nearpod library, um, you, they have lots of music that you can um, choose from, but you can also put in questions as well. So again, very Ed Puzzle-esque like, right? Um, and it's similar to Go Noodle and Flocabulary because Flocabulary is wonderful. For those of you who have been to the tech conferences um, and we get to go to the Flocabulary booth, that's a lot of fun. And you can insert your own videos from YouTube um, and you can find um, when you hit play on your own, again, we can hit play or the student can hit play. Um, and then again, you're going to see that interaction question as well, but you don't have to add questions. So again, just a nice way to mix it up. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, this is a maybe a great uh, segment for your teachers after they have a breath of um, respite over the summer to introduce them to another tool for their tool bag. And uh, one thing I will say about Nearpod, sometimes when you advance in a lesson, your students may be saying, uh, I only see a blue screen. And this could be one of the times we're getting ready to do the last element, which is gamifying and, and providing a game situation to engage your students. Sometimes when you switch over to time to climb, you have to remind them to refresh their screen. So if you uh, are looking at your student end and you see that you have a blue screen, just refresh. I will say, if you will just flip over to the Zoom side, if you are not using dual screens or split screen, just to look at the teacher side for just a moment, there are a few things I'd like to point out. You do get to choose different backgrounds, and at certain times of the year, there will be a fourth background that matches maybe a theme for the holiday or the time of the season. Um, one thing I really like to make sure I do because it's irritating to adults. So you know kids who have sensitivity issues, it's going to irritate and distract them. I like to always turn that sound off. You can't do it, unfortunately, when it's student paced. So if you do this student paced, you're stuck with it. And then randomizing answers is an option to do as well. So on your end, I'm going to click, um, I'm going to do the mountain one, and I'm going to click continue. Now on your end, you should be able to choose a character. So if you can pick quickly, we only have three questions, but don't everybody pick the penguin. I don't know why, but it seems like everybody chooses the penguin or one of the pandas. And then click start. And when you do, you're going to see it populate with other people. Everybody was so quick. So I can go ahead and start the activity. Most of the questions are 15 seconds, but I did shorten one to 10 seconds. The default is 30 seconds, which can be a little long for some things, but you can change that. So go ahead and choose the answer. And then as soon as everyone is chosen, we will move up the side of our and the quicker you answer, the more points you get as well. So it's similar to Kahoot, right? Only there's something fun about watching your little character climb up that mountain. And on my end, I can be watching to see who's scoring uh, the most points so I know they're answering quickly and who may have dropped off. Like have, there are no points up for them. And this should be our last question.
And definitely try this in a staff meeting um, because adult learners are going to love this. Like even if you just, you know, do it for fun, just to build community among your staff, this is a great way to build that community. In your end, you can see the podium has Brian at the top and Donna and Valerie. And then on my end, I see live data, but then that I will be able to dive into a little deeper when we get to the report section uh, after we finish the lesson. So again, just tying it all back to our five easy engagement strategies. We have visited strategies within Nearpod. And as it was explained in the chat, a lot of people were relating it to Edpuzzle and to Kahoot and to some other things that they've experienced. All of those provide these opportunities of engagement with, for your students. So. Um, and yeah, and we, we have some additional resources. And when Jacqueline puts out the recording and we add um, the, these resources, um, you know, you can learn about the paid version. You can learn about the free version. You can learn about the Google add-on and how that works. Um, and then there's articles and there's resources on the last slide. And then we're also going to send out the student link that's going to be active for 28 days. Um, so you can go through that at your own pace, or you can send it off to some teachers in your district to say, hey, check this out, try this new um, interactive tool and let us know what you think. Um, and now Juliet is going to go into um, the data. Um, and as she opens the data, one of the things I said in the chat room is data is really powerful to use within the PLTs as well, right? So I'm going to have to end our session so you will get booted out of it so that we can get the data that you can see. So now you'll just simply be looking at the Zoom screen. And oh, I'll thank you for playing. So yes, thank you very much. And I do know that we may be going a little over. I can't remember if we started right on time. So I will just- We're still good. On, okay, I will touch on five just minutes. a few things. I'll just touch on a few things with reports. So I'm gonna to go to reports. And of and the course, dashboard, and the dashboard is very easy to use too. I like that. Yeah, and, and there's just so much in it. So as you can see, the our session here, NCDLCN, I may have uh, run through it a few times before today's session, but I'm going to click on today's session, our most recent one. And you can see you get an overall summary of how many things were answered, how many things were skipped, because we were flying through it just as a demonstration. At the top, oh, and then you can also see here are students and nicknames. And I do like that some people did use nicknames. Uh, that is the glory of Nearpod is student, it protects data privacy with students. They don't need to put in their real name. You could, they could have nicknames. Across the top, you can see these are all the activities that you did participate in that actually collected data. So that one hands-on virtual math thing doesn't collect data, but it's still an important piece of the lesson that students need to experience. So let's begin with the interactive videos because there were two of those. You can see the dark band right here. This one, when I drop this down, I get a very easy to see graph that tells me that um, of these two questions as far as how many were not answered and how many were answered correctly. But what I really like is then I can go into each question and see, all right, well, these are my students that didn't answer. It's like Wanda was doing something, I don't know. And um, which ones answered number three. So I've got a good handle on just that question because you know, occasionally we just add bad, ask bad questions too. So this may really help you reframe either your next lesson or maybe how you ask it to a different group. So I won't hit on every single one of those because I want to get over to our back to our collaborate board. When and you if go, you're, and Julia, let me add, if you're a coach with a beginning teacher, this would be a great tool to, to pose that question. How do you think your questions, how do you think you're formulating your questions for your students? Um, that right there can give some data for that, for a beginning teacher. That's a fantastic point, Wanda, thank you, yeah. Uh, in the Collaborate board, when you look at that data and you click on it, you're just gonna be able to pull this up and then really take some time looking to see how everyone interacted. And that could be really valuable if you're using a Collaborate board for social emotional learning or um, classroom community building because it's gonna provide you with other things. You could even use something like that and build a, 
something like a time to climb off of their answers for a later time. Then the draw it, when you drop this one down, you're gonna get the little thumbnails of everybody's drawing so you can go back and review those as well. And finally, the time to climb, you saw the data that I got out of that in live time, but afterwards I can go here and the same thing is going to apply. I can look at the overall data, but then I can look at individual students. And then once again, I can look at individual questions that it's going to let me know how everyone did. So that's gonna help inform my instruction for sure. The other thing that you are able to do, let me scroll to the top, if you see this downloads button right here, you can have all of your data download into a CSV file that you could then sort for your PLTs or sort for conferences, student-led conferencing or conferences that you have just with parents or that students lead. So that can be some really good data that you can disaggregate as well by downloading that. And you can even share it with other collaborators that may be uh, teaching those students as well. So that's just a very quick overall view of the report section and of course of the dashboard. Within the slide deck that we used to create this, we when you have that, the student link that we are going to post, there are going to be additional links beyond what Wanda showed too that will kind of explain how to use the add-on. Feel free to use any of those with your teachers if you would like to. Just know that the add-on now, if it's been a little while since you used it, you actually have to have, to have the paid version for the add-on to be available to use. And there's some other information, like I said, within here, including the video. Mm -hmm. So I think we made it in just over our time. Uh, what questions and answers there yes, feel free to uh, open your mic or add uh, your question to the chat. I've also added a link to give us some feedback on this session before uh, you have to go back to your busy days. So again, if you want to open your mic or you want to add a question to the chat, feel free. Great job, ladies. Concise to the point and um, Awesome as always, I can't find a one instance where I've seen you pre present anything that wasn't awesome. Oh, thanks. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Thank you, Brian. Thank you, guys. Did you, I just, did you, did I you just, link I, the uh, presentation? Pardon? Did you link the presentation? Uh, Jacqueline's gonna send it out in an email. Yes, we're going to actually post it to the uh, site on our uh, FI Connects lunch and learn place. So if you want to bookmark that after today, the resources, the links that were referenced in the chat to additional articles, we're going to add the recording of this along with the links so you can go back, explore, and uh, when you have time to kind of dig in a little bit further, all on that particular page. And Tom asked a question in the chat. Tom, do you want to unmute and clarify? your question a little bit? Oh, sure. Uh, just, you know, when we think about student engagement and how, and a lot of these near product activities were really, really useful. Um, I'm just, something that's been on my mind a lot lately, and maybe this will be less of a need going forward, but just the idea of bringing remote students and in-person students together, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just mm -hmm. thinking about that, thinking out loud, you know, it's hard to make them, you know, to build that community. And like so that's how, just, that's how do we bring mind. how do we bring the remote in the at home or in school together? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, in Wake, they've been doing concurrent teaching as well, and that's part of the reason we've been doing a lot of the engagement stuff with Nearpod because mm -hmm. those engagement resources are just good engagement strategies, no matter what but how can we bring those together so when they're teaching simultaneously both groups, which is the kind of the glory of at least if they are, have something like an interactive virtual board like Padlet or like what was built in here with collaboration, they can do a lot of that team building stuff and kids can interact with each other without unmuting their mics if they're not comfortable doing that. So some of those are, are fun. 
gamifying some of that social emotional and team building and community building things can be done easily in this as well as pa Padlet in that kind of format really lends itself well to connecting them, even though they're apart. Is and even lot. doing um, morning meetings or morning circles in a Google Slides just to get those at home and those in school talking. I've seen a lot of teachers do that really well successfully when I go into schools um, and teachers invite me in the classroom. So there's some teachers out there that are doing it really well. But you're right, Tom, that's a great, um, just for all of us to be aware of, to, to be thinking about. 